Hi everyone, welcome, welcome to another Learn Grow Invest meeting. It's our anniversary. Yay! <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so we know some persons have been in the chat from a few hours ago, so shout out to you guys. So oh, we're just goodness. gonna go straight to a word of prayer. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you so much for this awesome day that we get to celebrate this awesome milestone. Father, yes, we pray Lord. your blessing on the proceedings here tonight. We pray that we'll just have a great time of learning and growing as investors. We pray just that you'll bless this community and yes, that Lord. persons who look on will see that we are at this point only because of you. We pray these things in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. 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 Okay. Amen. All right, so what's up first? <laughs> really? so, <laughs> <laughs> so guys, we are officially one year old on YouTube and that is what all the excitement is about today, yep, yep. this evening. And um, we're so happy to have each and every one of you here with us to celebrate. So we know that we have a few persons who are brand new to our community and we thought that to kick off this one year celebration one year youtube yes. <laughs> celebration we just give um a little intro to who we are as learn grow invest so learn grow invest started off really truly started off in december of 2017 at a dinner table just with a few friends who realized, oh, we're all interested in investing, in learning more about how to, how to grow wealth, how to attain wealth, and how to maintain wealth. So we started a WhatsApp group, literally, with four persons. Four. <laughs> and since then, we steadily grew as as friends, as a community, it, that group continued to widen until we went to in-person meetings and we started to to meet in a space and quickly outgrew that space. Yep. <laughs> so we went to another space and then eventually we went online. Um, that was pre-COVID that we went online and we started we started with Teams, Microsoft Teams. Yeah. Um, if you look Leave back at Teams our, alone. <laughs> If you look back at our very first video, you'll see the evidence of that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and then as, as we continued to, to grow and improve, we, we switched over to YouTube and we started our YouTube lives. We started up monthly meetings and eventually went to multiple meetings per week and then kind of settled at, yeah, thanks. Thanks to Mr. Mac for that one. Yeah. <laughs> to, the gentleman on the, to the gentleman on your right. Yes. You're right? <laughs> yeah. Um, but we we have now settled on weekly meetings. And so you, you will typically find us here on a Thursday evening sharing with you as we continue to learn and grow as well. We we share with you so you can learn and grow with us. And it is it is our honor to partner with God in this way, our community is truly founded on our faith. And it is in fact founded on particularly the scripture, Deuteronomy 8, 18. So we are, we are Christians first, investors second, and we, we surely find it as an, find it to be an honor to share our faith in this way um, with, with our community and also to share knowledge about, about, investing and growing we are strong believers in learning and that is why we do what we do how we do it so we are we are blessed to have to have over 1200 subscribers on oh, this channel yeah, yeah. one year later yay yep. <laughs> clap on yourself <laughs> yes we are we are truly <laughs> He just had to. He just had yeah, to do Jeremy that. doesn't do well with the pathway, you know. Me, you see, no, you're going to let everybody. Okay, it's fine. <laughs> but yes, um, it is truly our honor to, to be here with you guys. And we are looking forward to an awesome evening. So light up the chat. Let us know that you're here. Let us know where you're from. Yep. And let's have an awesome time in, in celebration today. Yep. So it's time for a giveaway, right? So Lisa, do you have one ready? Of course. <laughs> Greetings! Yay! <laughs> All right, everybody. So I have been tasked with providing our early bird giveaway. I am the one 
who get to give away things. I'm very happy. I like free things. I know other people like free things too. Um, so can I get a drum roll please for, if this is the first person, <laughs> this is the first person to comment in our chat today. And that was at 3.42 p.m. Yep. Right? Yep. <laughs> Early, early, early bird. And you know what? The saying is right. The early bird definitely catches the worm. So we have yep. Franz Pierre. If you are in the chat, please comment now. <laughs> yes. So comment yes, this would be a great time. Yep. Yeah, now would be a great time to, to comment <laughs> again. <laughs> so yes, Mr. Franz Pierre is the winner of our very, very, very first prize. Thank you so much for being early. Thank you so much for being excited with us. It's very exciting for us as well. Oh, yes, he's here. Okay, he's here. Yes. <laughs> yes, so you are the winner. Yes, we are, we are now happy to have you. Congratulations. All right. So to claim your prize, you are going to send us an email. Yes. Right? Yep. So we'll the email address should be in the about in section the of our page. Yep. So... Go ahead and email us and you will get your prize. That's right. All right. So we have, what do we have yes. next? Okay. Next, um, I think this might be one of my favorite parts. We mm. have a video montage for Longer Learn, Grow, Invest um, from, our, from all of the different persons. Um, and we have, of course, we have to thank our admins and our moderators. But can we start with the video montage? Yep. All right. That's right. Video. Go! <laughs> <laughs> all the different guests that we've had all the different episodes that we've had if you've missed any of our episodes please feel free to just head on over to our youtube channel of course when this is done and you can go ahead and go through um for all of the videos that you may have missed um some of some of them are extremely educational um things that you would not thought would not have thought of in a million years so yeah. So right now we're going to acknowledge and thank our admins. So those are the persons working behind the scenes right now that you don't see, that you don't get to see. Yes. But we want to acknowledge them and thank them for all their efforts. So first we have we have Rick St. Clair. He has been with us from like day, day one. one. So he was a part of the original four. Right? <laughs> yes, that's right. So we want to the dinner table. Yes, yes, he was at he the was. dinner table. He was at the <laughs> dinner table. So uh, we want to acknowledge him for all his work and effort. Mm -hmm. And sorry. Well, there he goes. <laughs> <laughs> kind of an unplanned arrival. That's but... okay. You see his face now <laughs> <laughs> under the cap. <laughs> yeah. All right. So um, next we have Dane Smith. So Dane Smith also works behind the scenes. Dane Smith does not like to show his face on camera. In <laughs> fact, the camera is not even on backstage right now. But Dane Smith is our moderator, so you'll see him in the chat and sharing our con our our flyers and our content on social media right. every single time. So shout out to you, Dane. 
And we also have Deborah Warren. She has been a moderator for us as well, especially for our Facebook group. Yes. So Deborah, Dean, thank you guys so much. Mm -hmm. And we have a special prize for you that you'll get that we'll tell you about later. But <laughs> definitely know we have something for you. We didn't forget you in all the giveaways. So we, we have something to thank you as our admins. Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. And of course, we, we do want to say a special thank you to the regular faces who you see yes. here on, on our channel, Mr. Chike Verwe <laughs> and Ms. Lisa Marie Knight. <laughs> Beautiful people. Thank you so much for, for I all I feel like I couldn't need to talk about my shirt. Yes, I feel like I need to talk about my shirt. <laughs> yes so um i think i think we can i think we can let our moderators know that that's what's in the mail for them they'll yeah. be getting their yeah. shirts as well um we we have officially printed our first branded shirts yep. for Darren Grow Invest. Merch. Yeah, you have to do it like all the YouTubers, you know, we got <laughs> merch, we got merch, folks. We got merch. <laughs> yep. Yes, and they are available. They are available for pre-order right now. Yep. Um, we will, of course, on, our, on all our platforms, make the announcements about when it will be available for regular orders but yeah. with pre-orders you do get a discount yeah you get 20 percent discount on the pre-order so yeah I, I will take advantage of that one yes yeah, so look out look out for the look out for the information on that on our social media platforms but yes we love our shirts we're excited about them and we hope that you love them too yep. all right so i think we're on to another, another giveaway. giveaway yep chica, chica over to up. you i get the honor of doing the second one yeah <laughs> Um, actually, are we gonna announce this? So, so the moderators are looking to see who's gonna who's gonna see yep. our type first, right? Fast fingers. Yes, yes. All right. So, here's a question for you guys: Who was the very first guest that we had on Learn Girl Invest? Yep. Very excellent question. When we did the show, when we did our first show, first yep. on YouTube. Yep. On YouTube. <laughs> On YouTube. <laughs> yep. Specifically on YouTube, yep. That's that's who gets it. That's you gets it. I'm a terrible <laughs> drummer. <laughs> Not anything in the chat yet. Not because everybody's scrolling through YouTube. Yeah, isn't that? <laughs> YouTube <Checking>. yeah. <laughs> Oh, wait, one, I have, I have the mods, I have the mods confirm. I see one already. I don't see any more yet. Ah, mm -hmm. uh, yes, yes. I think we got an answer. Yep. <laughs> yeah, there's nothing more there. So we have, can we we have a winner. Yep. We have Maybe. a winner. Yep. So Leo Dish, I hope I got the right, the last name yep. right. Correct. So there you go. Leo Dish. Yes, you are. That is correct. Robert Leonard is our was our first. Congratulations! So, yeah, we should have cast him like some confetti. <laughs> like we got, we got to do that where balloons come, like like virtual balloons come down. And <laughs> confetti. <laughs> All right, awesome. Congratulations, Leo. So again, we just ask that you send an email. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna put the email in the chat. In the chat. Yep. For you to send. All right, and then I think we're we're over to yep. all right. So we, so have, we have another video. Yeah, yep. another special treat for you guys. So all right, we're Hello, switching over. Rwanda Invest community. My name is Jillian Jackson. I shared with you this year about some tips on budgeting and saving. I had a great time sharing my experiences and providing you with some tools and templates to help you on your financial journey and increasing your financial literacy. So I, my, I had a great time, my meeting was great and I continue to encourage persons to seek out financial knowledge, a, a, a lot of which is provided by the Learn, Grow and Invest community. So congratulations Learn, Grow and Invest on turning one. You're a toddler now and time for you to continue to grow and keep shining and keep sharing and, and providing knowledge to all of Jamaicans. I love what you're doing, keep going and I'm here to support you all the time.
Hi guys, Randy here from the Earning Season Podcast. And I'm just saying congrats to Learn, Grow, Invest for one year on YouTube. You guys have grown tremendously over that year. Um, earlier this year, my co-host and I, and I did an episode on Learn, Grow, Invest and that meeting was pretty good. Uh, we really got a chance to interact with the community, share a lot of the gems, and it was a really fun experience. And if it looks like this in year one, imagine how good it will look in year 10, right? So congrats again on the one year, keep up the growth, keep up the knowledge, and let's see what it looks like in year 10. Hi, I'm Renai Hall, I'm co-host of Finance Podcast, Earning Season, where we speak about investments. Congratulations to Learn, Grow, Invest on the growth of their platform, as well as their one-year YouTube anniversary. Some time back, my co-host Randy and I presented at one of your meetings. It was a good experience. The listeners were really keen and enthusiastic. And I just want to give their community a shout out and keep growing, keep investing, and all the best in your journey. Happy, happy birthday to the Learn, Grow, Invest team. A big congrats on your first anniversary. Um, as a proponent of financial inclusion and financial literacy myself, I think what you're doing is not only amazing, but absolutely necessary. Um, I think the people of Jamaica will be better off having you guys teaching them and breaking finance down in a way that they're able to understand or we are able to understand because certainly while I may not be able to take part in all the group chatter all the time, um, I definitely read through and there's so much to be learned there. Um, there's never too much information that can be consumed, right? And thanks again. It's been wonderful working with you guys, um, presenting with you guys. And, you know, without a doubt, I'm always here to um, to jump on another YouTube video with you. Um, I'm always happy to do so and honored. So, again, congrats. Wish you all the best. Uh, many, many more years to come. And keep up the amazing work. I want to say congrats to Jermaine on making it one year on YouTube, getting to almost a thousand subscribers. I had a great time on your channel. I've learned a lot from you. I've really enjoyed connecting with you and your community. And I know that you're going to do great things in the future. Congrats, Jermaine. Keep going strong. telling me about the whole idea about bringing financial literacy to everyone in his own in his own way and i just really appreciated it i was actually there in one of the early meetings back in the before times when people could meet in person right and just be a part of it and get to see how he was building the ecosystem for himself and i really appreciate that um not only as a viewer or a guest but as someone who generally wants to see jamaica and is doing better and becoming more financial literate um to push towards their financial freedom and as I always tell you, you know, it's not a sprint to financial freedom. It's it's a marathon, you know. So I just like to big up everybody who's been a viewer, big up everybody who's going to be a viewer, big up to everybody who's been sharing the videos and letting everyone know about it. And uh, keep trying, keep buying. Thank you. You know how to take it. Right? Awesome. Yep, we want to just thank again all of our guests, all of our presenters. You guys have been just great. You know, everyone, we've never had anyone say no to us. That's how great it's been once Bless we've God. extended an, an, an invitation. So we want to thank all of our guests and presenters. And we're always looking for presenters, by the way. So if you know anyone that would be interested or if you're interested, just reach, reach out, out to us. Yes. And I, I think I know Lisa said that the other video was her favorite. I think this is my favorite, yeah. <laughs> my, my favorite, because it just it just speaks so much about community, um, mm -hmm. the power of community. Each and every person who has come on Learn, Grow, Invest, who has come on these meetings and presented and shared has helped in building financial literacy and financial yep. education across across not just Jamaica, but across borders. Yeah, and, and we feel like we're new to the space. So everybody we would have invited to, to come on 
was there before us. We came and saw them. <laughs> so True. we are, you know, definitely trying to to be, you know, unique in our own way. But we thank them so much for agreeing to partner with us in, in that regard. So, yes. Yeah. And I think with that, it's an awesome time to say thank you to our sponsor for this episode, Victoria yes, Mutual. Thank you so much. Your opinion. <laughs> all the giveaways that we are we have given away are going to give away. Yeah. All all sponsored <laughs> by VM. So thank you so much. And yes. yep. Yes. And so we are going into another giveaway. Yep. And this is another fast fingers one, guys. So get ready to type and get ready to type quickly. Now, if you were here earlier, you would have heard me give the synopsis of Learn Grow and how we started. So I hope you are paying attention. Because the question is, what is the founding scripture for Learn, Grow, Invest? Tell me yep. where to find it. So you're going to type where to find it and type the scripture itself in the chat. Wow. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that, that one. Mm. Mm. Yeah. So mm. like, <laughs> you don't know Good if luck. you're too <laughs> Yeah, yeah it's where it is. <laughs> well, okay, we can I'll, give you some clues. I'll give you a hint, a hint on our Twitter and our Instagram profiles. The yes. scripture is there. Yes, it is. Yep. That's, a, that's the is. entire thing. You should just like, no, no, the address. Ah, we, all right, we, there's so one piece. That's first piece. Yes, so we need, we need the scripture as well. We need you to type out the scripture now. So, Kanisha, we see you. We're not going to put it on screen just yet. It's a two-part answer. Yep, yep, yep. So we have so we have the address. What is the scripture? What does it say? We need some Jeopardy music. If you're supposed to answer already, you know. That's what I'm thinking. Like, how long are you going to answer? I'm supposed to repeat. I'm supposed to repeat the music. Yeah. All right. Um. So, guys, it's a hard one. It's a hard one for them still. It's not the kind of prize that we can split in two. Yeah. So we kind of just need you. Yeah. To complete your answer yeah <laughs> okay oh so the first the first person who answered you're waiting on her so no, no. It's, it's, yeah, it's, it's a two-part so whoever can give you both is, yeah. is the winner right okay. cool. we're waiting so whoever on the first. gives you the first person to give you all of the answer it will be the winner that's Not right complete okay cool. so, so, so we we're still move on until someone answers you want to say that is it that hard guys Tell us, was that one no. hard? It's people that alone. You know, it's actually, the truth it, is. It's just finding it. It's a web search, though. It's a web search. Mm. So. Yeah. All right. So um, I think we do have we do have a follow up from last week in yes. in um, giveaway number one that we had put out on social media. Yep. We didn't have a Twitter winner last week. So while we wait on our on our answer for a founding yep. scripture address and the actual scripture okay. <laughs> um, we we can go ahead with the raffle for giveaway number one from twitter last week all right let me just load this screen so give it a minute all right so guys you're getting a little more time even now no we actually i think i think you can i think we can officially one was Do quicker than the other <laughs> look at it but Oh yes, yes, yes. We so do I believe, have a winner. I believe Kenisha, Kenisha is yes. yeah, Kenisha is the winner. Scripture and she did the line as well. That's right. Yep. Congratulations, Kenisha. Yep, congratulations. <laughs> congratulations. And yes, our founding scripture is Deuteronomy 818, and it says, But remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you the ability to produce wealth. Yep. All right. So let us load the next giveaway right away. More free things. 
<laughs> yep. So thank you guys so much for participating. We love that. We really right. appreciate it. Yes. So this one is the first giveaway that nobody claimed last week. So these are From some Twitter. of the entries, not all of them. So if you don't see a name, don't worry. And what we're going to do now is, what do I do? Just refresh and then, where do I go? Okay. All right. Ah, here we go. Random. Here we go. Who is it going to be? Right. So Venture Capital, you have won. Congratulations. Yep. So <laughs> let us see a runner up just in case. Let's see if it was claimed. Ooh. Was it claimed? Ooh. Moderators, we'll check just yeah. in case. Just <laughs> there. Okay. It's, so I, so we're, guys, we're just, just for, getting some options just in case. <laughs> just for transparency. Yeah. We are we are being sure to let you know, let you see yep. how it is being chosen. So clearly Victoria Mutual is not gonna win the Victoria <laughs> Mutual Prize. So, yep. so right. we do have runners up. We yep. have three options, three runners up if yep. the, if the for the claiming of the prize from last week. Yep. All right. So we either need to see Venture Capital by the end of our guest speaker's presentation, or we're going to just roughly it again. Or I think... No, we have two other, yeah, two other we have options. Two others. Right. Okay, perfect. All right. All right. So over yeah. to you, Lisa. My turn? Yes, yes ma'am. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, this is the moment we've all been waiting for, although most of you have been waiting for the prize. Um, the waiting for the prizes. However, we do have a guest speaker for this evening. Um, it is my pleasure to introduce him. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about him before the grand reveal. Tonight's guest speaker is Mr. Courtney Campbell. Uh, he is the president and chief executive officer of Victoria Mutual, a leading Jamaican financial group um, with operations that expand, extend to major financial districts in North America and United King Kingdom. Courtney assumed the position in April 2016 and immediately went about igniting and transformation of the organization, which includes an ambitious digital strategy that has led to the new products and services being delivered in modern, convenient ways. Courtney has leveraged the organization's cultural beliefs and core values to kindle the VM team's passion for uplifting Jamaicans. He is, a, he is a stringent advocate for greater financial inclusion, which is the founding purpose of VM and a significant motivator behind the work that he has done. Before joining VM, Courtney has already established an enviable record of success in several senior executive roles, including that of the Grace Kennedy Financial Group, he has also spent over 23 years with the National Commercial Bank, serving in various management positions, including head of the retail banking division and other roles instrumental to the bank's success. He holds a BSc in management studies from the University of West Indies and an MBA in finance um, distinction jointly awarded by the University of Wales and Manchester Business School. He is also a member of the Chartered Institute of Bankers London. Courtney is a director of Victoria Mutual Building Society and all its subsidiaries, as well as associate company British Caribbean Insurance Company. He's also chairman of VM Foundation and the United Church Mission Enterprise. Courtney is a corporate champion for the UE Stat Mona Campus and serves on the Governor General Jamaica Trust and Investment Committee of the Council for World Mission. He is a former chairman of the National Education Trust, a justice of the peace. Courtney is an advisory board member for the Governor General's Program for Excellence and I believe and, and an I Believe Initiative Ambassador. He is married with two sons and he's married to his lovely wife, Pauline. Ladies and gentlemen, please give a virtual round of applause for our special guest this evening, Mr. Courtney Campbell. 
Really good to be with you. Thank you very much, Lisa Marie. And thanks to my good friends, Jermaine and Renee McDonald for inviting me to share on this special occasion. It's a really special, it's a big deal. One year on YouTube. <laughs> and, you know, I think we should all just congratulate the team, the Learn, Grow, and Invest <laughs> team for, for the vision. A lot of people have vision, but don't follow through with it, right? Amen. Um, yeah. But you have the mm -hmm. vision and you have followed through and you have kept it going for one year. So That's we true. expect that, you know, it will be moving from strength to strength. But congrats for one year providing excellent financial education in what seems to have been a most inclusive way and a highly engaging um, format. And really what's impressive is that it's been based on the solid foundation of a loving faith. Mm -hmm. and, and we think that's, mm -hmm. a, that's a really great um, way to, to go. So I've been asked to share a, some, a few thoughts on the importance of financial education. And as you, as you, complete, as you have completed one year, no, I think it's, it's kind of a good topic to reflect on because you've been providing that, but we all need to remind ourselves, why are we doing what we've been doing? So I'd like to start by sharing with you a definition of financial well-being that's borrowed from the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau in the, in the United States. And so they've defined financial well-being as having four components. Control over one's finances. Capacity to absorb a financial shock. Being on track to meet financial goals. And for the ability to make financial choices that enable one to enjoy life. So first one, control over one's finances. Two, capacity to absorb a financial shock. Three, being on, on track to meet financial goals, whatever your financial goals are. And four, the ability to make financial choices that enable one to enjoy life. So uh, financial well-being doesn't mean that you have to be a billionaire or a millionaire. Just means that you have to have some control, you have to be able to absorb shock, you, have, you should be on track to meet your goals, and you should have the ability to make some, some choices, you know? So I came across um, some research done by a Wharton professor, Olivia Mitchell, who is also director of the Pension Research Council in the state. And, and she shared a quote that I want, uh, she said something that I want to share with you. It says, she says, during their working lives, people spend too freely, save too little, invest unwisely, and generally make a hash of their finances. There are exceptions, of course, but study after study shows this to be true for millions. And then she goes on to say, people who are financially literate tend to plan more, they save more, they invest smarter and they end up with more wealth at retirement. So we could almost end the presentation there. So, so financial education helps people to achieve financial well-being. And I want to share with us this evening five reasons why financial education is important. Firstly, knowledge is power. Knowledge is power. Someone by the name of John Lancaster said, Lanchester said, the language of money is a powerful tool and it is a tool of power. So we need to think back several millennia, perhaps, in fact, before Christ, to recognize that the religious elites in ancient Egypt maintained then a secret system for recording and protecting flood levels in the River Nile. And, and I would call that system Nilometers. And this asymmetric flow of information meant that the elites established and maintained power over the most critical drivers of economic fortunes. They would know when to plant, when to reap, and when and how to move to protect livelihood, because only they had that information. Knowledge is power. And in the same way, 
fast forward to 2021, today's financial elites, you also use an asymmetric flow of information. So what they're using now, the smart guys on Wall Street or the London Stock Exchange, is an elaborate ritual and language designed to bamboozle and mystify and manipulate. And so they're creating a knowledge gap that actually leads to a widening income gap. And so broader participation in financial markets is good and that's progressing. In Jamaica last year or, or the year before, you had Wigton Wind Farm record participation. And then after that, Trans Jamaica Highway being listed. And, and hundred, I mean tens of thousands of people participated. So so we do have record ownership now in stocks, broader participation in financial markets. But this broader participation has not been accompanied by the corresponding increase in knowledge about how financial markets work. You would not believe how many people who are now the new owners of stock in Trans Jamaica Highway understand um, how few of them understand how financial markets work. Some of them ask, can I withdraw some funds from my investment? Right? That's, those are the types of questions you're getting from them. They don't know how to go about selling the stock or doing a margin loan against the stock. So, so do not equate broader participation in financial markets with knowledge about how financial markets work. And you are addressing how financial markets work. And that is why Victoria Mutual, we have invested in several programs aimed at improving knowledge of how financial markets work. We have something called the VM PET program, Financial Education to Empower. And we have another one called Ignite, IG Night, uh, like you know, uh, Knights of the Round Table, right? Program. So, so we launched the VM PET in December 2019. And really what this program does is encapsulates a series of initiatives aimed at supporting our financial education value proposition. Because we have said that that's what we want to differentiate ourselves at the end, to provide financial education because we care. We care about people's financial well-being. And so the program initially targeted university students and, and it then has further expanded to the secondary level. And a financial education curriculum has been developed for each group with accompanying interactive workbooks for both groups and videos for secondary students. And so we have engaged at the university level eight youth ambassadors from both UE and, and UTEC, and they have undergone extensive financial education training along with the support of the VM financial experts, and they have been conducting financial education sessions via social media with specific groups and typically with our students. And then the VM Ignite program now is a partnership with the New Testament Church of God. And they have a national tertiary students initiative, which is a leadership program, and they're targeting students of the University of the West Indies as well as Shaw to Teachers College. And so what they do there is that they have participants engaged in, a, in a, a program that's approximately 12 weeks, comprising of leadership and personal development training. And so what Victoria Mutual has done is that we have sponsored the initiative and we provide financial education training. And we provide participants with the necessary support to guide them along the path towards making wise financial decisions in order to create wealth and achieve their financial goals. And they will go on to help the participants to understand the basic principles of personal financial planning and introduce them to the VM approach to creating and maintaining wealth. And so the VM FIT curriculum, Financial Education to Empower, is also used in this program. And then finally, the VM FIT curriculum supports another important partnership. And that partnership is a social enterprise and secondary schools initiative. And that one is conducted in partnership with the British Council. So in addition to learning the principles of establishing a social enterprise, the students in this, in this program 
are provided with financial education training. They learn the key principles of financial management for their small businesses. Uh, and so these targeted initiatives, whether it is a VM, Ignite, social enterprise in secondary schools, all the other things that we're doing are supported by our routine financial education webinars and special programs which are conducted throughout the year. Just last night, VM Wealth had a session on cryptocurrencies just to provide information. Not necessarily recommended it, but just to provide information. So the first reason and most important reason why financial education is, is important is that knowledge is power. The second reason, and the others will be shorter, don't worry. The second reason is that, is that there is a retirement crisis looming. People are living longer. The average person now needs to plan for a retirement that might last 30 years or more. And the social security is not enough to live on. I just heard, you know, the Minister of Finance launch a program, social um, pensions, for those who are not covered by NIS, they're trying to help. But guess what? It's $3,400 per month, right? Um, and people who are in NIS, you know that it can, you know, you can barely live off them. In fact, you can't. So on top of that, the social security not enough. On top of that, those who have pensions, know that defined benefit schemes are being replaced now by defined contribution plans and by ARS plans, approved retirement schemes. And those shift the investment risk from the employer to the employee. So in 2017, only 35% of the elderly population was receiving a pension in Jamaica, 35%. And of, and of that, 25% was from the NIS. So in general, the poor have less pension coverage. 83% of the poorest in Jamaica are not covered by either the NIS or private insurance in comparison to 49% of those who are more well off. And that's from the Capri study that was launched in March of, of this year. And only 10% of Jamaica's working population, so those are the people who are retired, but only 10% of Jamaica's working population are on a private pension plan. And of those contributing, many have not exercised the option to increase their pension contribution to the maximum allowed of 20%, which is a tax-free saving opportunity. And you will learn growth and invest. You, you learn growth and invest. You have to share that education. So so my advice is that self-employed people, contract workers, professionals, check out approved retirement schemes and ensure that you are preparing for your retirement and that you are, you are exercising the option of investing up to 20% of your income. Because you do not wish to be unprepared when you are at your most vulnerable, which are in your senior years. So when you're financially literate, you will prepare for retirement. The third reason why financial education is important is market complexity. Financial life has become more complex with the growth in the different types of mutual funds and unit trusts and annuities and various kinds of personal loans and mortgages and complex tax laws. In Jamaica alone, we have 58, I counted it yesterday, 58 unit trust portfolios to choose from. VM Wealth Management alone has, has nine of these, 58. So how do you decide which ones to invest in unless you are benefiting from financial education? Over 120 securities are listed on the Jamaica Stock Exchange. How do you select? And we can also invest in equities traded on overseas stock exchanges. So you look, you look at the New York Stock Exchange. The New York Stock Exchange alone has 2,800 companies listed. So without sound financial education, you will not be able to navigate this complexity. The fourth reason why financial education is important is that all financial decisions are important. It is not only important to save for retirement, but it is important to make the right decisions on budgeting, spending, managing credit cards, buying a car, choosing a mortgage. So for example, just take one, savings. The more cash you have is the more opportunities you have. 
and, and Proverbs 21, verse 27, the wise store up choice food and olive oil, but fools gulp theirs down. So, you know, we advise people to save at least 3 to 5% of gross salary from, from every salary check using guidelines such as, you know, having a clear measurable goal in mind, not delaying, start saving now, you know, save more by consuming less and take full advantage of opportunities to save when you spend and don't lose your regular savings to supplement your household budget. And, you know, as I said before, maximizing your annual pension contribution. But the idea is to consider regular savings as payroll deductions or automatic bank transfer. The key decision, though, is how much and how are you going to save. All financial decisions are important. And if you're thinking about buying real estate, real estate is always one of the best long-term investment assets. Because according to information received from the BOJ, from our central bank, housing prices in Jamaica increased by 70% over the 10 years, December 2008 to December 2018. So when will you start investing in real estate if you haven't started already? And what about equities? The Jamaica Stock Exchange has been the world's best performer in, the, in two of the last six years, in 2015 and 2018. Two different political administrations, right? We were the top performer. 2015 under the PNP, 2018 under the JLP. So it, the politicians actually don't matter, right? However, it declined by 25% in 2020. So it will be good to take advantage of low prices on some stocks. You can start with very little, but ensure that you understand what you're investing in. How will you start and manage your equity portfolio? Again, financial education is important. Consult your wealth advisors for that, right? So that's the fourth reason. And then the fifth and final reason why financial education is important is that financial education must be ongoing. A controlled study led by the same professor I quoted earlier, Professor Olivia Mitchell, found that participants in financial education programs who did them in the prime of their working lives at, say, 40 years old, plus having regular booster shots, has a, have 10% gain in wealth at retirement versus their control group. Right? They've studied this. Compared people who, you know, took the financial education, got regular updates, they ended up at retirement at least 10% better off um, than, their, than the people who had not benefited similarly. So here's what I want to wrap it up. I want to quote from, in congratulating, I want to quote from a favorite scripture verse of mine, Luke 4, verse 18. Jesus is giving you his mandate for ministry. And he says, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, proclaim liberty to the captives, and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed. So if we are to be faithful to our mission of liberation, healing and empowerment, financial literacy has to be included in any curriculum that any people of faith would be doing. So we have to teach stewardship now in a new holistic way, managing God's money. The money we have is not ours. So whether it is tithing, saving, how to prepare for tertiary education, how to purchase your first car, your first home, managing money in marriage, retirement planning, how to start a business, that's the holistic stewardship principle that we have to teach. So I want to congratulate Jermaine and Renee for taking the bold step to start this liberation movement. That's what you have started. So may learn, growth, grow, and invest. Teach many more. Help many more to grow from strength to strength and yield rich return on investment in terms of the many lives that will be financially empowered. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Courtney. Thank you, you, you so you much. You embodied exactly what we stand for. That's that's awesome. Thank you. Yes, thank you, Mr. Campbell. You told me to church with that one man. <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> I was over here going, yes, it's bad. No, what you're talking about? Yes, it's you know, not very good. Very good. Glad you glad you could relate, uh, Lisa. <laughs> Lisa Mary. 
too many elderly persons don't have um, pension, too many young people spending their time yep. buying things and not saving the money. I see somebody yep. somebody posted in the chat that, you know, um, Jamaicans, elderly Jamaicans say that they, their children are their pension. Right. And I thought about it and I'm like, I wonder if that is what my mother planning. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, that's what I love. No, seriously. It's a dangerous it's position. Thing. That's right. what a lot of that a lot of people um, say. You know that they're, they're going to be dependent on their children, and the children will have their own stresses. Yes, you know, the children may have lost yes. their jobs last year during COVID. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Right. You see, I have to prepare for myself and my mother. Now we have more mm -hmm. work to do. And that's, yeah. a, and that's, <laughs> and that's a that's a global thing, but it's a Caribbean thing more so than yeah. You. And anything else it's not even yeah. a, just a jamaican it's actually just a caribbean i guess that's because we're we're grown as family in in that kind of way but uh, um it's just yeah and, and also because we have not invested in financial education as we're doing now you yeah. know uh, some other cultures actually teach their their children how to manage money mm -hmm. um in a better way in, a more, in an intentional way and and that's what we need to be doing uh more of here yes yeah great Agreed. So, so that's the thing. Our parents never thought about retirement. Mm -hmm. that, that that was it. They never thought about teaching us about money. Uh, David, our, our guest last week, spoke about it. There is a mindset about money that needs to be learned that most parents don't think no, to pass on. Mm -hmm. They really think about just surviving for the day or the month or what or whatever period they're in. So it's it's definitely a great need that we see out there. Absolutely. Well, let me yeah. put this question to you, Mr. Campbell, as well as uh, my counterpart. I have uh, a young lady. Uh, she works as a call center. Very young. And I, one of the things I admire most about her is that she is determined. She has, you know, her heart is in the right place. But she really don't have much money. The money that she's working is going towards, you know, rent, light, water, groceries. And there isn't much left over. And it's hard to tell her, you know, boy, just start, just put what you can, just. And for her, it's not, you know, I'm saying to her, you're not going to see much right now because it's hard right now because you're young and it's not a lot. But I promise you, in time, you'll, you, you know, you'll be grateful for it. What advice would you have for younger Jamaicans who are struggling on their own? You know, they, they're working jobs that don't pay very much and they can't see how they could possibly be just putting anything aside um yeah. i've had more than one person ask me this how do we if you just you can't see where the extra money coming from to put aside mm -hmm. all right so i would say i would say that um everyone can see it. yes fundamentally everyone can see it uh, regardless of how little you're earning um they need to be and it's going to be a great sacrifice up front but you'll be amazed mm -hmm. how quickly they can adjust it right just imagine you got a salary cut because some people have had to bear through that and that say and so what you need to say to that person i will start somewhere three percent five percent right not even ten percent you know um you need to encourage her to pay herself first why should the yes. tax man get paid before you? Pay yeah. yourself first. And, and, and decide that you're going to put aside from your little income 5% and you're going to do it via a salary deduction so that you don't see the money. Because, because it's so small, her salary is low when she gets it. It's going to be difficult for her to put it aside. So mm -hmm. if she gets it via salary deduction or the transferring the funds to a bank. Many of the call centers would do that. And she sets up a bank, an automatic bank transfer to, to transfer the funds from that particular account into another account, right? Um, an, an automated uh, bank standing order. Then she will find that she makes adjustments, whether it is in electricity consumption, water consumption, telephone charges, use of the cell phone, she, she, they will make eating out. They will make adjustments to cover for that more than cover for that five percent. I guarantee you. Tell her to try it. You tell her to try it. 
you check upon her as an accountability partner, right? And you call me one year from now and tell me if it hasn't worked. All right, let me see. Today is the what? Today is the six. <laughs> six. <laughs> I want to add. To, I want to add to that. Um, I'm a, I'm an, a living example of your of 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 your colleague, that your method. friend. That's where I started. My start of of my career was in was in a was in the call center in in Claro in when my phone Claro days. <laughs> That's where it began. Wow. And yeah. so she's got she's got two things to, to really do. So she's already ambitious. You either as, as Mr. Campbell says, there's nothing too small that you can't that you can't save. That's the first thing. The second part is what you're doing by putting paying yourself first, as he said, because the tax man is actually taking the money first, by the way, <laughs> when your salary comes out, if 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 you fall in that bracket. But if you don't um, the tax man is also getting it from GCT. So pay yourself first. So as, as Mr. Campbell states, if you do it via salary reduction, etc., what you're building really, no matter how small it is, you're building a mental mindset, yep. right? Mm -hmm. The amount you save today, you won't miss it more than likely the next month. I mean, even if you're watching your savings, like a, your, your, your salary, like a hawk, you won't miss it the next month. What you will see though is that when you check on it sometime down the line, you will see that that's money that nothing has claim over. So no tax man is, is not to any kind of deductible for NIS or anything like that. Light, water, rent. That's yours. Mm -hmm. And up to today, I actually was speaking with one of my friends and um, his business. And he said, you know, his business is just getting off of the ground. And it started to pay him some some remuneration and he said he's putting it back into the business and i said no you're gonna stop that you're gonna take the 10 percent that you take out from your you're gonna whatever you get for your remuneration you're gonna take 10 percent, and you're gonna put it aside it's not big it's it's a small amount but i said you're gonna put it aside i don't care what you do you put it in a you can put it in a savings account you can put it you're going to start doing that because you're going to build the mental psyche you're going to see because he said to me he's tired and you know he, he he knows his goal but what's going to happen to your friend just like what happens to everybody at some point in time if you can't tangibly see your effort you're just going to be thinking i'm just working just to i'm not working to earn i'm working to just mm -hmm. you know, keep spending going forward you need to tangibly see some something for your effort right. so and putting in that regard probably she should set some a particular target target there yeah. is some particular yeah. objective that yeah. there's nothing that motivates like working towards a target so indeed I yeah. indeed yeah so what i would add to that is we understand that situation well also try as best as possible to stay away from debt i know it may be appealing to borrow to maybe try and cover a gap in in some instances but stay away from what i like to call unnecessary debt there are some debts you can't avoid um depending on like, your situation but if you have the option to borrow versus maybe waiting a few months to to buy that same thing that you'd have borrowed for mm -hmm. do that because debt will will delay your ability to save Right. So the more yeah. you're paying in interest, the less you're able to to see for yourself. I think I think one of the furniture stores taught us that in our very very early days of marriage. <laughs> yeah, you're gonna learn that quick. Yeah, yeah we, we did that higher purchase thing for our first piece of furniture and we're like, Ooh, never again. Bought a TV that way and never did it again afterwards. It, it taught yeah. me as well. So I learned well. Yeah, yeah, just I, learned, learned. yeah. I learned higher purchase in second form and I remember thinking to myself, I am never doing that. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. I never yeah. have. But, but, but they do they do if they the furniture retailers tend to in to have a, another option that works much better which is i think i don't know if they still do it but uh, if you're paying 90 days yes you get that the one, i remember that yeah it's not really huh? interest free yeah. that's yeah. the one we tried and it it's not really interest free okay. so like read the fine print <laughs> 
Okay. All right. What's the recommendation? Yeah, I don't know. I, I'm not so familiar. But yeah, but but certainly higher purchase is to be avoided. It's a very expensive. It's actually better if you really do need to to borrow to acquire. Probably you're just setting up home and and you need to um, acquire a refrigerator and you haven't saved and that you can't live without a fridge or a stove. You might probably better to borrow from a bank because the interest rates. And then, and the financial institutions yeah. will be lower than the high purchase rate. Yes. Bank mm -hmm. and, then, and then um and then purchase cash from the from the furniture retailer. Yes, yeah. absolutely. I have another suggestion for you as well, too. So uh saw this saw this on a on, on an in, on IG an Instagram post. You can also suggest that your friend because more like a call center, so she's gonna get paid right automatic to her to her bank account. What she could also do. Um, if she takes money out, she can create three envelopes. We all do this. We all do that. We used to, I hope we actually all do it. Your spear coins, you put them in a bottle. Or there's a thing where you basically, cook, you can take one of the big water bottles. Yeah, I have a water. Inside of it. And every single week that you have change left over in your wallet, your purse, etc., take that change or whatever money it is out and put it inside of the bottle. Mm-hmm. Let's whatever it is draw for the next week. That's different, but you keep until that bottle fills up. That's how we end up um, going to 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 to. It was G, it was GK yeah GK actually to do the do the reclaim of coins. What your what your friend can do is also create an envelope and write her different her different expenses on it. If she's not doing it automatically, and she takes out the money, but she has one expense in there that is critical, entertainment, which is what. Jamaica is notorious for spending the most money. Yes. Put all of the money in each envelope. And when she's ready to spend on the entertainment or whatever it is that, that doesn't need to be spent on, if the envelope for entertainment is empty, that's Don't it. Go nowhere. That's <laughs> that's 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 <laughs> until the next until the next payment. If you discipline, it's about it's about forming the discipline. So she can choose the envelope method. She can do the unlock, but she's got to farm that level of discipline. You know, that's, yeah. that's, the, main, that's the main part. Because you can live on, you can live on, you live on whatever you, you earn according. You find a way. You find a way to, to compartmentalize. That anything. is so true. That is so, so true. I used to live just quiet. fine on less money, and I don't know how I live it. Yes. <laughs> I used to go. live just fine on less there money. Yeah. I used to live just, yeah. and I really want to say to her, I want to say to her, you are young, start your pension now. <laughs> no. I wish somebody had told me to start my Indeed. pension. Indeed. I worked, I, I used to work at places that had pensions, so I never, I understood it, but it, once I left the, the, you know, the place, I didn't have a personal pension. And I wish mm -hmm. someone was there to say to me, you know, like how Mr. Campbell is here saying, we need to have our pension. I want to say to her, start your pension now you will be grateful in the long run you will be mm -hmm. happy in the long run start your investing start your savings start your pension and and insurance is cheaper at her age as well that's true yeah so. but as as you mentioned the pension I, I don't want us to miss it because again life experience when i was younger i was like oh no it's not a big deal you know we have time i'll only pay the five percent and i was blessed enough to have someone someone older who said no start now max it out now and i did that the, for the following year and when i saw the difference on my statement i was like what yeah what? so you know this girl maxes out her pension yeah every Re Re <laughs> every month years ahead of me when he's here ahead of me in in terms of pension, so that's that's a, a great it's example. Very, very, Rene, very you're going to, Rene, I guess you're going to have to to feed him in in retirement, right? No. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, my plan, Courtney, I say to her all the time, like she's going to be taking care of me. I'm, really? I'm just saying, it's, you know, he who finds a wife. <laughs> we do have a question from our from our audience for yeah. you, though, Courtney, from sure. France. From yes, Franz, he's asking, do you agree that a loan is a good idea when investing in business? Yeah, all right, so great question. So, yeah, typically it makes sense to borrow when investing in an asset that will appreciate. 
And so the business would be an asset that you expect to appreciate because the business is going to get more valuable over time as the revenue grows and so on. Um, so, you know, just like buying a house because that asset will appreciate the same applies to a business. However, having said that, you want to ensure that you have a really good sound business plan because if you don't have a sound business plan that says the business is viable, that you will have the revenue growth that you expect, that you, are have, you really have a good handle on the cost, that the cash flow will be great and will put you in a position to service the loan, then you can end up worse off because you will still owe the money with the business not being able to pay. You are personally liable for it. And then, you know, you might have to sell assets that you had even before you thought of the business idea. Mm -hmm. Right? So, so you want to be careful in thinking about, um, you know, ensure that you have developed a really sound business plan and you know how you're going to execute well. You're confident in yourself and your team to execute well on it. That's when you should borrow to, to, to grow the business. Agreed. Great. And I'll, from from personal experience, I mean, I was going to say unfortunately, but it's it's all a lesson now. It has helped us. It, it has helped us. We found ourselves in that same position because we had a company that we borrowed to try and grow. So we had a really great year. We borrowed money thinking that, great, it's time to grow now. And sometimes a lump sum of money can take your mind off of the priorities of a business. So you have extra cash that you would not have had. And instead of being resourceful, you start to cut corners. Instead mm -hmm. of insisting on a certain margin, you say, okay, I can absorb that loss. And then what I always found is that one, once we borrowed money, it's almost like using the money that you borrowed to pay it back for the first few months until that dries up. Mm -hmm. And then you see the true position of the business. Yeah, yeah, and to to note as well, in that situation, it, it does go back to what, what Courtney would have mentioned yep. earlier, the power of knowledge. Yep. Because when we took that loan, we didn't know what we were doing. We didn't have a full business plan to, right. to see where we were going. Yeah. And we we absolutely did not know what was going on in the in the world market because we, we took that loan in 2018. Now we know what happened in 2018. There no, was like 2008. 2008. Oh, oh my gosh. Yes, the age in itself. Age. Go ahead. Yes. <laughs> 2008. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, That's don't feel like that long. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, 2008 when the market crashed and and so it made business very difficult yep, for us. Yep. Our, you know? our sales decreased by 40% the year after we borrowed the money. Yeah. So okay. we, we, that, we, that, that, happens in, that happens in business because this is yeah. the free market, right? So you aren't promised anything. Right? Exactly. exactly. So, yeah, man, it, it, so it, it's okay to borrow, but I think that you have to sometimes maybe bring the business to a certain point first. If it's a brand new idea, validate it first. Absolutely. If if you if you haven't found one customer willing to pay something, it may not make sense to borrow money because especially if well for most persons who have a business idea, they may not be good with probably one of the most important pieces, which is marketing and sales. So I may be good at the technical side, but I'm not good with finding customers or bringing in business. Right. And that means that again, cash will just finish faster because you're not getting in enough revenue to, to justify your costs. So I can go off on a tangent on business, <laughs> but yeah, let's for let's another end time. It there. Yeah, but great point, great points all. But thanks for the question, friends. Yeah. We do so, have another question as well, Courtney. Um, this one is from Kanisha. She's asking for the persons listening who would like to get involved in the financial education training from VM, yep. uh, how can they do so? Okay, great question. All right, so I explained the two main programs that we have, well, three main programs that we have now are limited to a few. So that the FED program at UTEC and UE, we do have some ambassadors there. If you are a student of either of those universities, please let us know. Or perhaps you are a tertiary student at another institution and you'd like to, to start the FET program at that institution, please let us know, send us an email 
um, if you are not a student but you would like to benefit or be involved in financial education training, send us send us an email and, and we'll see how we can get you involved. But certainly a good way to start is to just uh, view the YouTube videos that we have or participate in the webinars that we that we stage yes. from time to time because you'll find that those provide really great knowledge. Yes. And if you feel that you'd like to be part of sharing that with a group, you know, um, with which you're associated, please invite us and, and we could probably do that together. How is that, right? So probably you're in a service club, say, um, you know, invite us to share with your service club. We would be happy to do that. Perhaps you're in a church, invite us to share with your church and we can partner with you on, on executing that financial education training. That's what I'd suggest. Awesome. Okay, thanks for that. All right, now we have Francine. Shout out to Francine who is in our Facebook group. This is a plug for you to join our Facebook group. <laughs> so Francine is asking, is now a good time to be buying real estate for renting if you already own a home and have no mortgage? Seems like real estate is overpriced in Kingston and St. Andrew all across the country, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, that's, that, that's, yeah, so it may be, I mean, I think what you have to do, and you're right, that some people, in some categories, the real estate may be overpriced. And the reason, but, but the other issue is that in some price points, the demand is all stripping supply. I mean, I'm helping someone right now to try to find a, a detached house um, in the corporate area at under 30, 30 million dollars, and they're having a really great time, a difficult time find, find identifying a property like that because they don't want an apartment, they don't want a townhouse, they want, they'd like to have a detached house, and they can't find any, any property, mm -hmm. right? In, in, a, in a decent area. So, um, so that's a problem, but it is, I think, that. The advice I would give you about buying real estate for renting is that it's always something that could be a good investment, but please ensure that the mortgage, you can comfortably service it if the property is vacant for a long time. Yes. That's a calculation you have to do. Can you service this mortgage if the property remains vacant without a tenant for two years? How would you manage Mm -hmm. If you can do that, then yes, um, go ahead with this transaction. Okay. Yep. Yes. Write so, down answer. <laughs> huh? Write down answer. <laughs> Make yes. sure you can service for two years. Yes. Right. Without rent. Right. Because mm -hmm. frankly, the market company, when you come to BM, we are not going to include the rental that you're likely to earn in the in your in your income because we don't know when you get a tenant we don't when you get after you get a tenant we never know if the tenant will pay and we don't know when the tenant will leave yeah right <laughs> right all right so thanks for that courtney so we have um a, a statement from jess addressed to you so, so she said that she has a problem and she's hoping to develop a program for older persons especially women many are in debt over their necks and they're they are an ignored population so i don't um, I take it, I, yeah you yeah i take it that jess is is seeking some feedback from you on that one on yeah. maybe or maybe some ideas on how right, to some ideas some key all right, let's talk about some high level high level some elements that you could include a program and by the way just really great um that you are thinking of developing this program yes. for them because yes. you know that, that's really great and and because you have taken responsibility for it i'm sure um some people will benefit from it right um so so i'm just taking responsibility is the first step so great that you have done that i want to applaud you so here's what i would suggest are some key elements for that so they're in debt um when you are heavily indebted, you have, you have a couple of options. One is to cut your expenses, to generate some cash. 
the reason why Jamaica is doing a little better now, our economy, is that since 2013, we, you know, we, we, we put a belt around our economy, right? Um, and we, we cut a lot of, take, took out a lot of expenses. Um, and so that's how we were able to pay down the debt. It had peaked, debt the GDP had peaked at 147 to 147% debt for our GDP. And now it's down to 100%. percent It's actually gone out to 96 But because of COVID, it has gone back up over 100 Now, same situation with individuals. So see if we can help, you can help them to, to review their budget. Probably none of them are working from a budget. And they may have pensions that are fixed are, you know, and, and their expenses are totally out of work. And, and you have to help them now to devise a budget. That exercise will help them to identify some things that they could possibly do without. Tough, mm -hmm. tough choices to be made. It's not going to be easy. Tough choices. Yeah. There is another approach that may be added to that which is to say do they have some hobbies or something that could be monetized mm -hmm. that could be turned into income however small the income is mm -hmm. right but are there some if they are able able-bodied and able to move around and able to exercise this hobby can they earn from it right painting something i don't know what it is right and so that might be an option for some of them so those are two things to start with. One is addressing um, costs or the monthly expenses. Another one is adding some more income to what they're already doing. Another option is, you know, part of saving on the cost is to probably start in a backyard garden, um, you know, to, to try to, to cut down on their food purchases. And you never know, do, will they have enough that they can sell some, <laughs> right, um, mm -hmm. from what they're reaping. So, you know, but they have to start somewhere, is what I would say. Um, the other thing with the debt now, too, is that you they could try to renegotiate some of the debt, right? Some of the, some of the creditors might be prepared to lengthen it, to cut the interest rate, to forgive some of it. You never know. If they don't ask, they'll never know. Right, so so that that's another thing that could be done. All right, hope that helps to get you started, Jess. That's excellent points. Yes, indeed. I think I I think that last point about the renegotiation is something that a lot of persons overlook. Very, they don't know actually. To be very honest, I, I'm going to ask. see niggers. No, some people <laughs> don't know that they actually can. Uh, to be very honest, they, yeah, they really yeah. don't. And the assumption is that you can't is that it is rigid and that and that the bank will say no but and so persons don't ask because i mean when you sign a contract you're thinking that contract is final it's fixed so yeah 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 but, but banks are typically especially if you have been you may be struggling to service it but especially if you have been servicing it well um the bank would be prepared to listen to you to say boy you know i've been struggling i've paying a hundred thousand dollars a month on this but could you lengthen this repayment for your, um, program for me, or could you reduce the interest rate, or yeah. both? They would they remember they're going to they're advertising every day, trying to get new borrowers to come in. Mm -hmm. You are already there, right? Right, yeah. and you are paying. So they, they they typically will be open to listening to you if you're not. If they're not listening to you and they hear that you have gone to another institution, all of a sudden the ears get a little cleaner. Yeah. That's very true. That's very true. What's that statement? There's a statement that they make. You, you, um, you it, it, I don't want to get it's not polit it's, it's not political, but it's, it's, you vote with your dollars, basically. Right. So you, you speak with you speak with your money. You vote with your feet, yeah. That's right. Yeah. 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 That's, Okay. All right. So Jess is also asking, what do you look for in a good financial advisor? Ah, great. Question. Question. All right. Some really good questions coming from all your <laughs> participants. It's a really good club, right? So what I would say is in a good financial advisor, someone who is attentive, um, who is disciplined in terms of, you know, if they promise they're going to call you, 
um, to tomorrow at nine that you're getting a phone call from them before nine or by nine, right? So they're mm -hmm. reliable. Um, they are, they can be trusted to provide you with good research information, right? Because you want to be acting on the best info. You remember we spoke about the, how important yeah. information is, right? Yes. Um, and so, and how important knowledge is. So you really want to, like the religious elites of all, you want to have the, 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 the good information about the River Nile, <laughs> right? Yeah. Um, so the idea is, do they have access to good research information? Are they attentive? Are they reliable? Right? Um, are, how, how informed are they about a range of financial instruments? So some will just want to talk with you about stocks. Some will only want to speak with you about bonds. Some will, some of them are just very limited. You, you would want a good a financial advisor should be great uh, or at least conversant on a fairly wide range of instruments. And, and they should be honest because if they don't know enough about a particular instrument, about a particular market, they should be honest to say to you, I will go and get this information researched and come back for you. Right? You don't want them. They need to be honest. They say they don't know because they can't know everything. So don't look, don't look for a good financial advisor is not one that knows about everything. Because, you know. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. Mr. Campbell, thank you so very, very much. You're imparting all of your knowledge on us. <laughs> very wonderful presentation. And of course, the answering of your questions We've all learned something. I'm sure Renee, Jermaine, and Chike can agree with me that yep. it has been an absolute pleasure yep. to have you on. We must have you on again, you know, giving this information because there are so many people who are in desperate need of financial education, maybe a little bit more about pensions. Thank you so much from the bottom of my heart, from everybody at Learn Grow. We appreciate you. We appreciate everything that you do. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much, Lisa Marie. It was my absolute delight and pleasure to be with you. It's a privilege to share with you on your first anniversary. A congrats again. And thank I just you. pray that you'll go from strength to strength. And may this community, you That's know, the plan. Strive, strive in many ways. All right. Yes. All the very best. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Lord bless, the Lord bless and keep you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Right. All right. Thank you that so was so much. awesome. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you so, so much, Courtney. We really, really do appreciate you. I see the chat. In the chat, persons have been saying that, yes, you need to come back and they want really? more. I'm ready for it to be for, done yet. For Courtney to be their financial advisor. So I, I don't know how, how that's going <laughs> to work. <laughs> no. I don't know if he still provides. I don't know if he provides that. No, no, that wasn't in the bio, guys. Yeah, that, that, that wasn't in the bio. All right, so Chike. More free things? More free things. More free things. <laughs> free who, who's, who's been waiting for just free things alone? Yeah. <laughs> Actually, no, they, can't. they couldn't be after, after, yeah. Couldn't be, yeah. Been. So. We are Jamaican people. Yeah. It's yeah. so must be. So yes. Okay. So, go right. ahead. So, go ahead. All, right, all right. All right. So, this one is for the attentive. Let's see who has been really not just following us, but at the same time ensuring that they have looked on all of the videos. So yeah. since we've been doing Learn Grow Invest videos, meetings for YouTube, which one of our guests has been on our show or meetings the most? Yeah. It's a bit tricky because when I was looking at this, by the way, it's a bit tricky. By the way, yeah, <laughs> I, I, I have a feeling that I know exactly what most people are going to say, and that that's yeah. Like, so as you're gonna say, we should we should phrase it this way: Who has appeared on the most videos on our channel as a guest? We should probably say it that way. Yeah, yeah. All right. <laughs> so. Yeah, well, other than Chike, other than yeah, yeah, I'm not a I'm not a guest. Not I, a I'm, guest. A I'm a resident. 
<laughs> hey, resident. All right, guys. So, yeah, you definitely need to answer this one quickly because we have a couple more giveaways. <laughs> Just to go. go into yeah. our bed. <laughs> Why is this going to our bed? This, then? <laughs> wow. Ooh. <laughs> wow. Is that it? Is that it from, is that it from Leo? Is that wow. it? Oh, Leo. Well, Leo, you well are done. Yeah. Well done. Well <laughs> done. Yeah. Well done. Very, very well done, Leah. Congratulations. Yep. Congrats. Man, you're on fire today. Yep. Oh, Jesse, she's going to bed because she can't win. <laughs> <laughs> so sorry. Oh, Jess, I know how you feel. I, I'm never a winner of things most of the time. I, I understand. <laughs> I understand. All right, so Leah is definitely on a roll. All right, so we have... So we, we had... It's a giveaway number one. We still don't have a winner for Twitter, by the way. Right, we still right. don't have somebody claiming, so we may suggest stick around. We may just create a question, that yeah, and give that away. <laughs> yeah, but uh, we're gonna show now with the video. So, giveaway number two was for you to do a video, right? And on in that video, you're supposed to say what financial education means to you, and then you were supposed to share that on your page, tag us, tag our sponsor, yes, Victoria Mutual, yes, and then. Uh, Let's see what the responses were. So let's let's play the first one. Let, let's play the the, yeah. the Twitter response. All right. So just to be clear, guys, with when we play this video, we are saying you have won. Yeah. Okay. And the prize is for giveaway number two. Yeah. So you need to be in the comments claiming your prize <laughs> when do. we play the video. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Please do. And um, giveaway number two. The the items, right? The items are your very own you Learn, Grow, Learn Grow Invest, Invest shirt. branded T-shirt. Mm -hmm. Yes, you'll get your own. You get $15,000 from, from Victoria VM Mutual. Well. Mm -hmm. Yes, from VM Wealth, right? So that's your investment seed money right there. Mm -hmm. And then you're also getting a financial, a planner. financial planner, right? Mm -hmm. From Cerebral Massage by Gaylion, as well as a very stylish VM mug. Yes. So it is... It is a prize to be enjoyed, Indeed. right? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so here we go. What does financial education mean to me? Hi, I'm Shana K. Campbell, and this video, I tell you just that. So what comes to mind first are the results. The big house, the luxury car, the college fund, the traveling the world, vacationing in style. So bottom line, less stress, the good life, financial freedom, and dreams becoming a reality. For me, financial education means learning about wealth creation and a better relationship with money. So growing money management skills such as budgeting and investing. So no more pitfalls such as bad debt, bad buying decisions, poor investment decisions, or poor spending habits. With financial education, I am learning, growing, and investing. What major or important lesson I've taken from Learn, Grow, Invest? One of the things that stood out to me was what David Mullins said. It starts with mindset. Mindset, he said, was something that he found common to all successful people, or at least having the right mindset. How you deal with failure, how you deal with people on your team, and how you deal with money. The conversations around wealth creation, moving or shifting from a scarcity mindset to an abundance mindset. Congratulations, Sean and <laughs> Well done, well done. And now we're going to show you guys, share with you guys the IG winner. Same prize, different platform. Let's go. Hey you, yes, are you me I talk to? You ever in a one situation and have no money, not even a dollar? Yes, it happened to me enough, enough time. My granny did tell me some of a sea of rain it be here. You think of my granny alone me did learn from? No, sir. Me learn from Learn, Grow, and Invest Club. Eh? How will you learn from them, sir? Them teach me about the stock market, you know? Yeah, them teach me about the stock market. 
We say the carnation market. No man is stock market. Them teach me say me need to understand what me a buy. Do all the research. Understand the price go both direction and don't set unrealistic expectation. When you get a paycheck, what will you do with it? After you pay your bills, what will you do with it? Did you do your monthly budget? Are you planning to just go and profit? Look here, I start plan for my retirement and don't create no excitement when I save and buy my McLaren. Anyways, I'm going to learn, grow and invest club me right now. Me talk to you later. <laughs> wow. Guys, if I love it one more time. That was hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> I love it, Andy. We act for creativity and they came wow. the way yeah. out, right? Yeah. That, that, Mar that Marla was, definitely that, yeah. Right. yeah, that's excellent. <laughs> Shana K was her 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 video was definitely as well too. I mean the nugget actually big up to that to remember so well. Yes. Of our last of our last meeting with Dika. That was yeah. that was that was a tantamount like a very important statement as well too. It yeah. starts with I, what are you talking about? Mindset. Yep, absolutely. Yep. Shana K has been very, very active on social media and interacting with our content. So definitely appreciate everything that you've been doing, Shana K. Uh <laughs> yes. Yeah. I'm. I'm. AKA Marla Rock. Yes. Excellent Samoyo. video. Oh, oh, Samoya. Yes, okay. There she is. Excellent video. <laughs> the entire group loves it, and <laughs> I have. I have no comment apart from <laughs> that. <laughs> Clearly a content creator. Clearly a content creator. <laughs> that was ingenious. <laughs> we love um, it, guys, and we really are. We really are happy to see the the participation on our platforms yeah. and we are even happier to see you here with us on thursdays yeah. for these live meetings trust me we appreciate you our community so we have one final giveaway that is still not yet claimed so we're going to make this one easy if you can name one of the five things that courtney said in terms of the value for financial education just one First Just person one. in the chat, name one. And thing. so, guys, what we're giving away here is what should have been given away for $10, giveaway number one dollars for Twitter, right? So and this a is financial now, planner, yeah. So this is now ten thousand dollars from VMBS from the Building Society, as well as a financial planner and a mug. Yep. Right. So, so going once, first person to type in the chat. Guys, the moderators helped you with this one, you know. Yep. They, had, they had put it in they, the chat. They were posting it in the they chat. They had put yep. it in the chat. So I'd scroll really fast. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Ah, yes. That's it. Right? That's one, right? Ramon Taylor. Yes, Ramon. Yes, he yes. said knowledge is power, Knowledge right? is power. Yes. Awesome. Well done and congratulations. congratulations, Ramon. I thought Jess would have answered that Jess was waiting. I was expecting <laughs> Jess to wait. I was expecting <laughs> Jess. <laughs> right? Okay, well well done. So now yep. we're all out of giveaways, guys. Yep. All the free things done. <laughs> so. But, but you can, add, in a couple of days, you can start pre-ordering your Learn, Grow, Invest t-shirts. Yes. So look out on our social media for that. We, we, we have, yeah, is that it? Any, any other major? Yeah, questions? so we, we just wanted, we just want to say thanks again to, to Victoria Mutual, our sponsor for this, for this celebratory episode. We also want to say thank you to, we also want to say Arville, seriously, is, is, is that is that a serious question? <laughs> Arville? Arville, this is my wife. Why? Well, of twelve years. Seventeen <laughs> years. Guys, wow. just ask, is this your wife or your sister at Germany, <laughs> McDonald? Like, <laughs> sir, really is this really like the time and place? <laughs> Yes, um, you, you can find out more about that on our other channel, Loving yes. to the Max, right? Yeah. So you can check that out, guys. We'll drop that in the chat for you. Um, but yes, we just wanted to take, them, take a minute to say thanks to our sponsors, Victoria Mutual, as well as Cerebral Massage by Galeon yes. Williams. And also, 
we want to give a particular shout out to Kingdom Quality Apparel, the makers of shirts, our right? shirts, right? The yes, quality is so awesome. amazing, guys, right? So check out Kingdom Quality Apparel on IG, and you can or you can see their store and order additional apparel from them there. Yep. All right, guys. So this was uh, an amazing meeting. I had a lot of fun. Uh, Courtney really gave us a lot to think about. Absolutely. The giveaways mm-hmm. were awesome. And we will really, really look forward to more. We are working to provide more content, more meetings. We hope to, to, to be able to provide more value to you in the coming year. We really, really need your support, though, in terms of sharing our videos, in terms of interacting with our videos, telling us what you want us to, to share. Tell us what you want to learn. So we really need to hear from you. So post it in the comment below this video what topics you want us to cover in the coming year. Tell us what your gaps are and how we can help. To the rest of the Learn, Grow, Invest team, Lisa, awesome work, Chike. Um, You know, Chike and I have issues from time to time. (laughs) um, (laughs) Chike is is always reliable. Thanks to Dane and, and... Deborah Clark. Yes, thank you guys. Thank the, the wider group as well. Yes. You know, everyone who volunteers, everyone who gives off their time. Absolutely. Shout out to Simon, uh, the guru of spaces. <laughs> you know, shout out to me. Yeah. is here. Orville is here regularly. Um, you know, Richard, just everyone. Thank you guys yes, so, so you much. Guys. So we will see you at next. the next meeting. meeting. All right. Bless you guys. Yes. I really need some confetti. Like, yes. Yeah. This is just yeah. yeah. <laughs>